Hi, Dennis Rollins is here. Great to see you. I'm really happy to take up this challenge and um, give you a taste of the things that have influenced me, the music that's influenced me, and the music that um, I'm really excited about today. I'm going to go right back to the beginning of my career um, when I was really interested in discovering, just discovering new works. And, and one of the first things that I, start, I began to listen to was um, this fantastic fantastic Wayne Shorter album, Speak No Evil. Now, what um, really attracted me to this is the sort of darkness of um, the sound, um, the sort of darkness of the arrangements, and the beauty and the sort of um, space. So that's number one, Wayne Shorter, Speak No Evil. Right, let me put that down. Number two, 1980s album, Mr. Hands, Herbie Hancock. Now, the thing about this album was, um, this was one of, one of the many albums that introduced me to funk and um, with titans of musicians like Harvey Mason and uh, Jaco Pastoris, Paul Jackson, um, to name just a few. You know, this is a, a real complex album, but really full of a lot of colours, a lot of textures, a lot of um, really deep harmony. I can see um, where... Um, this had its place in a lot of musicians' hearts, especially, obviously, the keyboard players. So, Mr. Hans, Herbie Hancock. Now, the, this album here, Billboard Truth, um, any trombone player will know of Bill Watrous, Bill Watrous, Bill Watrous, um, from, from way back in the day. You know, when I first heard his trombone playing, it was something that I've never ever, um, even to this day, some of the stuff that he plays is just so incredible. Um, and it, it's a, a milestone of, um, of trombone playing, if you like. It's a milestone in, in technical ability. And um, he had a big band. This album, it doesn't actually have a name. It just says winner of the 45th Downbeat Readers Poll for Trombone. So I think this is a comp compilation of a lot of his um, big band work way back in the 70s. Check him out anyway. Okay, now, um, new stuff, new albums and people to listen to. I'm really into, um, I've been fortunate, you could say, to work with a great like Maceo Parker. And he's got a new album coming out called Soul Food Cooking with Maceo. Um, it's out the 26th of June in 2020. Um, recorded in New Orleans, it's got a real strong funk New Orleans feel and he's playing not a lot of new stuff, uh, uh, let me take that back, he's playing a lot of the classic soul and funk songs um, and but with a real twist and of course he's, he's putting in a couple of his, um, one that's really kicking up right now is Across the Tracks, you can check it out, go online and check it out. As I say, the album's not released until the 26th of June, so do check that out. Another person I've had the joy of working with is the great Monty Alexander, the pianist. Um, he's got a new album called Warwicker Hill, um, Rasta Monk Vibrations. And what it is, is it's a real beautiful fuse of the music of Monk, fused with reggae. Now, don't think this is a cliche album. This is a very deep album. And um, on further investigations, you're going to find that um, there's a strong relation of um, Thelonious Monk living in um, New York with a lot of the Jamaican influences around him. I've been told this firsthand. So um, you've got to check it out to sort of understand the depth and the relationship and the, the sort of synergy, if you like, between the, the, the reggae and Thelonious Monk with his, with his quirky style. Check it out. Monty Alexander, Warwick Hill, Rasta Monk Vibrations. Now, Byron Wallin. Some of you may know of Byron. He's a great British trumpet player. Um, he's got a new album out called Portraits. Now, it's a real adventurous album. It sort of covers the styles of funk, world music, and a lot more. Um, it's really worth a listen, um, and really, it, it, it's got a lot going on in there. Right, I'd also like to take you back a little to Raul de Sosa. Now, I'm pronouncing his name a little wrong. I've been told it, but it's... Anyway, listen, he's a trombone player, Brazilian trombone player, 
um, and he harks, he, I say he harks back way back to the to the um, late 60s, early 70s was when he was really um, doing a lot. He's still playing today and he's playing fantastic and um, he's really worth a listen, a, a listen to. Some of you who know um, George Duke's Brazilian Love Affair album may know him for playing um, on a track called Brazilian Sugar. Um, incredible trombone player and, and he... He, as a trombone player, has my heart, and and um, I I listen to him all of the time, and his sound and the way he approaches melody is is incredible. Check him out. He's on Facebook. He's online. Incredible. Um, last but not least is a uh, um, a trumpet player called Eddie Henderson. Now I bought my first funk album um, way back in the seventies, and it, it was an album called Heritage by Eddie Henderson, um, by Eddie Henderson, let me get it that way around, fantastic, funk, fused with funk, heavy, really heavy, um, um, his trumpet is very Miles-esque, check him out, so listen, that's my group, that's my group of songs and my group of albums, great to be here with you, and I look forward to catching you all once all of this lockdown stuff and all of, um, all of the the sort of pain that's going on now subsides a little. Okay, take good care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.